Well, 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 I look out my window and what do I see? Another balmy day in sunny Alberta. I love to build stuff. Always have. Ever since that aha moment in grade seven shop class when I realized I really love this and I'm actually pretty good at it. I grew up in an era of rabbit ears and rotary phones and standing on the back seat. I grew up in a time where if you wanted to learn something and you weren't fortunate enough to have somebody to show you, you either bought a book or just figured it out on your own. I may not be the smartest guy, but I'm smart enough to realize that things like YouTube have just made our craft and the artisans that practice it way better than it's ever been. I was lucky enough to get my foundation from my dad. Guys like Jimmy DeResta, the Samurai, Chris from Third Coast, these guys have taken away any excuse for not doing the best work that you're personally capable of. For foundation woodworking, guys like James from Stumpy Nubs, Paul Sellers, and of course Rob Cosman have allowed the average woodworker to excel to levels that as little as a decade ago they'd never be able to achieve. So no matter what your project, whether it's something as big as this, or something as small as this, there's something out there for you. <laughs> Once again, Annie has to make her cameo. The guys that I've listed are just the ones that come to mind off the top of my head, but there are thousands and thousands of these channels out there. So it makes me humbled and honored that you've taken the time to come and check out mine. This seemed like a good time to introduce myself, hang out for a while, get to know each other, give you some idea of what it is I'm all about. If you're willing to come hang out and spend some time, I'm not promising we're going to reinvent the wheel, but one thing I've learned in 40 years of this is there's more than one way to skin a cat. As advantageous as this new era is, I still love the way things were done a hundred years ago. I like the old ways. I like to build things by hand. I like to finish things by hand. I love the way they feel. I love the way they look. I don't sand anymore. I love planes. Wait a second, not that kind of plane. Although in my life, I think I've built over a hundred of these. I'm always building something. A few years ago, I was challenged by some friends to build the scariest Halloween costume that I could come up with. I love a challenge. Anyway, this is the result of about two and a half months worth of work. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the Soul Collector. Eight feet, eight inches of pure terror. Well, it's certainly not off limits to anybody. There's actually very few people that have ever been in my shop. They say the stuff that comes out of there is magical. Well, let's start there. Let's take a tour of the general store. Welcome to my space, Organized Chaos. It's not a very big building, it's about 35 feet deep and about 20 feet wide, but I managed to fit everything that I need in here. Being an old time woodworker for years, I kind of rejected CNC. I thought it was sort of cheating. 
A few years ago, just for fun, I submitted a few pieces to the Builders Guild. When two of those pieces had the appraisers guessing, I decided at that point I guess I had nothing left to prove to anybody but myself. So I broke down and bought myself CNC. While we're giving props, if you're a CNC guy, make sure you check out John Clark. So the east wall of this building is definitely the definition of organized chaos. It holds an 8 inch general joiner, which doesn't see a ton of use anymore. I do like to still square by hand, but for big stock that's really out of whack, it sure is handy to have. The rest of this wall is kind of a plethora of small hand tools, turning tools, and a 36 inch revolver lathe, which gets a lot of use at my place. Clamps, clamps, and more clamps. Remember those days in math class when you said, I don't know what I'm ever going to need to know all these formulas for? Well, I'm going to share with you the first formula of woodworking. The number of clamps required will always be exceeded by the number of clamps available by one. As you make your way down the wall of the building, there's a little utility bench at the back with an assortment of cabinets and cupboards. You keep glues and resins and bits and sandpaper. I won't bore you with all that stuff. I admit, I'm a shop slob. If there's a horizontal surface in this building, it's got something on it. The back wall of the building has a small bench which holds my miter saw, which I still have to build a fixed fence for, and an 11 inch bandsaw. On the opposite wall of the building, that monstrosity, believe it or not, is a folding toolbox. At one point my shop space was my garage and I had to share it with my wife and kids. So I built myself this. It held literally every tool in my shop and it folded up and it folded up again and it folded up again and again and eventually that was the result so everything I had was in one small space in the foreground is an Excalibur router table beside that is an open-ended 16 inch drum sander if you're a wood turner and do any kind of segmented work this thing is invaluable now while I don't fold this thing up very often anymore, there are advantages to the end of this moving. If you're a small shop owner, you know the grief in storing stock and material. I can fold this thing in and store all of my hardwood behind it. It holds virtually everything other than sheet goods. It looks like a really small space, but there's a surprising amount of room back here. I can get a ton of material back here and it's completely out of my way. As I said, clamps, clamps, and more clamps. You can never have enough clamps. This wall has a bunch of metal cabinets that I use to hold solvents, anything flammable or hazardous. My carving bench, and right above that is a cupboard I built to hold all of my hand tools. I still have yet to get a face frame on it, but it works well. Now I've always said I could never afford to have everything that I'd like to have, so over the years I've tried to spend my money smart. I've bought the things that I really needed, and I've bought the very best that I could afford. By keeping it all this organized, at a glance, if something is missing, I know immediately. And for me that works perfect, because as I said, I'm a shop slob. If you guys are interested in a more in-depth tour of this cabinet, let me know and I'd be more than happy to do it for you. It's worth repeating that I have a passion for old stuff. I have a really small collection of old planes and shapers, and they're all restored and they all work. I love working with this stuff. Under the end of this bench is my sharpening station. Now most of my sharpening is done by hand, but this stuff is really nice to have if you have to restore a primary or regain a damaged edge. Right at the end of my shop is about a 40 year old radial arm saw. Now radial arm saws are kind of like ketchup. Nobody likes them. You either love them or you hate them. 
I invested the time and set this one up perfectly. Now it's accurate, it's repeatable, and for mass amounts of miters, it can't be beat. Because space is such an issue, there are two flip carts. One that holds an oscillating spindle and my planer, and another that holds a small drill press. Under that is a 6 inch disc and a 24 inch belt. This unit I have to thank a dear friend for helping me acquire. This was my investment in my respiratory health. That unit will completely exchange the air in this building about every 90 seconds. Anyway, that pretty much sums up the look around the general store. Well guys, I'm really grateful for you taking the time to hang out. If you guys will take the time to subscribe and hit that notification bell, I promise to take you guys along on a great journey. I am more than happy to share my years of experience with you folks. Maybe some new solutions to some old problems? Maybe some new takes on some old projects? I'll do my best to make it educational and entertaining. I was going to head out for the day, but when I look out at that, eh, I think I'll just stay here. Remind me again why I live here. Now to be clear, I'm not sponsored or endorsed by anybody, but every week I'll do a little shout out to someone that's made my life easier. So my shout out this week goes to Colin and the gang at Windsor Plywood in Sherwood Park, Alberta. Thanks so much for everything you do, guys.